Arcane Slayer. Now in this video we're going to be looking at two albums and it'll be down to you to decide which one is better, South of Heaven or Seasons in the Abyss. And we're going to start right now. South of Heaven is one of Slayer's three definite classics along with predecessors like Raining Blood and Seasons in the Abyss. We will also be talking a lot about how the influence of Black Sabbath plays an important role in this album's sound. In 1988, South of Heaven was released by Rick Rubin's label Def Jam and saw a huge change from its predecessor Raining Blood. Overall, the song tempos were mid-paced with some examples of being two of the album's iconic numbers, Mentor Suicide and a title track. It is clear here that Slayer have taken more influence from Black Sabbath during this time around as they display influences from the doom metal pioneering Master of Reality album. The two songs have become life set staples since Sabbath Heaven was released. However, it doesn't mean that there was no fast tempo songs on Sabbath of Heaven because there are tracks like Ghost of War and Silent Scream that give the album more variety in the track listing. Now, from my listening experience, the album can be considered a precursor to the groove metal sound that bands like Exorder and Machine Head were doing in the 90s since they share their fresh metal origins and are influenced by Black Sabbath. About my listening experience to it, at first I didn't like the title track, but it took me a while to warm up to. You listen to South Heaven and you're, you're definitely taken for a ride. The songs I really like on there are obviously the title track, also Spill the Blood and Mandatory Suicide and Ghost of War. The title track is a summary of what South Heaven goes for musically with mid-paced tempos and outstanding musicianship, with Daniel Lombardo focusing less on fast drumming and more on technicalities. Spill <coughs> the Blood closes the album and is the song that displays the most black sum of influence on the album with Tom Wright giving really cool a really creepy vocal performance. Mental Suicide is another slower number and this brings arguably the best lead work from Kerry King and Jeff Hanneman and has a jazzy drum performance that Brent Dale and Mastodon could be able to pull off. Ghost of War is a fast number that opens up the second half of the South Heaven and gave Lombardo a chance to channel a drum performance that is reminiscent of his Raining Blood performance. Most noticeably, Orion writes lyrics for 60% of the songs which means that most of the songs are about either serial killers or death. As expected, King Hannah was excellently what can be treated to the songwriting that they did. The guitar solos are still among the best solos in Slayer's catalogue, focusing less on speed and more on technicality. And speaking of the band's technicality displayed on most of their tracks, Slayer's cover of the Judas Priest classic This Is Sin Gressa, originally on Sin After Sin, works really well with the proto groove metal style of South of Heaven. Slayer would eventually cover the album, primarily influenced Black Sabbath on, on the Black Sabbath tribute album Nativity in Black 2 in 2000. Now, in my opinion, I even consider musicianship to be on par with Master of Puppets, which is kind of a difficult thing to admit, but in the end, it pays off for Slayer. So, Seasons in the Abyss completes Slayer's trip to drop albums for Deaf American with Rick Rubin at the helm. And like the pre previous South of Heaven and Raining Blood, Seasons cons consolidates games made previously and has stopped the revving effects of time with ease. That is not quite as good as the two previous albums and it's no real knock against it, though it does fall on the precipice of being Slayer's last truly good record. Slayer truly flourished under Rick Rubin, trimming the fat, dialing back the effects and just going for a juggle with a bone dry airtight production that has really stood the test of time. Whereas other late 80s fresh albums have a dated feel in their production, Caesars just rips from the first note of War Assemble onward. And War Assemble is totally whiplash in inducing evil thrash monster. Ruin, like not all, like all of Slayer's best tracks by Jeff Hanneman, it blasts like forth like artillery, harkening back to the nastiest tracks of Rain Blood, yet portraying a further depth of Hanneman, refining his hardcore punk leanings into tricky metal ter territories. Blood Red is a nice slowdown into atmospheric darkness, showing Slayer operating in a Hegelian synthesis with their previous two albums. Though one could argue that the continuing alternations between brutal fresh and slower groove numbers gets a little monotonous over a slight padded 42 minute runtime. I found that a minor quibble personally as the song right in here is generally excellent. At the 
my mind is scattered that keeps sees us from being out of classic perfection or being slightly dreary which kind of sense of society where it's relatively bland mid-tempo where it's extended past the point of redundancy a minimalist lowbrow groove that would sadly haunt this, haunt this band for quite some time otherwise though it, it's all winners true favourites over the years include Spirit of Black Spirit, Spirit in Black a galloping onslaught of thunderous thrash and prunes to cruise. This track grows through several different iterations and is absolutely blazing by the finish. The skin mask is a catchy as it is creepy highlighting Slayer's bizarre fascination with the most disturbed mindsets. Temptation is also a killer though, doing from the norm, focusing on heavily accentuated hardcore crossover grooves of the New York hardcore variety. When back in, Temptation points the way towards a better incorporation of these influences than what actually came to pass piece though is the title track. Six minutes and 36 seconds of Stygian darkness called from the depths of Hannibal's songwriting ability. This was the track that originally got, that kind of got me into Slayer with frightening baby steps towards a band that in 1990 was still utterly terrifying to, to those of us who were exposed to metal. Perfect, perfectly coupled to Hanneman's morosely patched and dying sounds are rise lyrics of his sanity lost and ritual sacrifice. The lyrics throughout the album are particularly sharp and diverse, tackling everything from overwhelming horror to modern day warfare to lay his cultural alienation. With Joe Hanneman's passing fresh on the mind, the record becomes even more poignant as it stands. Seasons in the Abyss includes a free album run of excellence nearly unrivaled in all of metal despite the later declines in the feuds and departures the underway returns one truth remains these early albums are utterly unfuckwinnable slayer forever <laughs>